family lived 300 yards from the hospital I was born in, so I never really went far. I enjoyed some of the people in my area. Um, so I'm really no one super special. I'm just an angry country boy. Um, <laughs> I was very, very close. I was extremely fortunate to have a close relationship with my grandparents. Um, they literally were 100 yards away, and they were a great influence on me. Uh, my grandmother was a, a classic Democrat, and my grandfather was a classic Republican, and that was kind of the trend in the family. The females were all Democrats, and uh, the males Republican, and it certainly made for a lively debate at the dinner table, I can assure you. <laughs> um, but by way of comparison, their, their philosophies were entirely different than today. Uh, my grandmother, the Democrat, is probably more conservative than the conservatives of today, mm -hmm. your mainstream uh, Republicans. And, you know, she was very hardworking, very family oriented. And my grandfather, uh, although, you know, he was uh, more the, the conservative of the family, uh, they shared a lot of commonality. And th those things came through loud and clear to me. And, and for that purpose, I don't play the hate game myself. I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm a Republican. I'm proud to be, but I'm not what you would call an establishment Republican of today. I'm, um, I'm more like my grandfather, but I'm a, a Dave Kopass Republican. Um, so I don't play the hate game. Just because I meet a Democrat doesn't mean I'm at odds. Uh, be, you know, and I've had party officials uh, tell me, you know, we are at war with Democrats, but be kind of like, hey, grandma, and that don't happen with me. I'll find that common ground and show that some of these more conservative values are not just personal philosophies, but they're ingrained in certain constitutional protections that should be in place. So, um, I spent the first uh, 11 years out of high school as a tree climber for the power company. I used to go out and clear all high tension lines and I was one of two crews in Massachusetts that was uh, climbing, um, starting out at the East Coast, working in the West. Spent uh, about six years doing that. I've always worked outside, either in logging or landscaping, that type of thing. And I was the type of kid that uh, I was, my grandfather said I was feeding mosquitoes, but I'd be out in the swamps catching snakes and raising tadpoles in the bucket. I always had a connection to the environment, and that kind of stayed with me through my whole life. And after 11 years out of high school, and I was struggling, to, you know, I'd get laid off a couple months out of the year and I was really getting old. Um, we had a young family at the time. Um, we had two kids in diapers, as a matter of fact, um, when we decided to go back to college. And I immediately fell into the environmental sciences and plant and soil. I, I really loved what I was doing. Um, rather than taking badminton for electives, I went and took aquatic ecology. I sucked as much out of it as I could. And uh, I managed to do it uh, with the help of my wife, and she went through as well. Uh, we both knew we had to do something to improve ourselves and get out of that slump of, you know, unpredictable work, especially with a young family. Now, when I graduated, I had a choice. The environmental field was huge. It's, it's still big and getting bigger. Uh, growth-wise, depending on what sector of it you're looking at. But I had an opportunity where I could have gone all up and down the East Coast and made enormous money. But some of those things that were installed in me at a very young age uh, led me to stay more in the residential field. I had little kids at home and I had one opportunity to raise those kids and I wasn't going to miss it to be messing around down in the marsh down in Louisiana or something. So. Everything I did was residential. I focused on wetland permitting and Title V. They have uh, Title V in Massachusetts, which is a whole set of septic regulations. If you want to sell your home, you will either have to get an approved uh, sep uh, septic inspection and or put $20,000 in escrow just for the transaction to take place. It's really uh, quite enormous. but. I stayed with residential because it allowed me to stay home and be with my family, come home every night. And um, things were going well. Every year things grew. I got more business. I got more clientele. And then the housing bubble popped. And that was it. Three years without my phone ringing. Now I, I kind of 
Now, I've always been of the mind to not put all your eggs in one basket and try to diversify as much as you can. And uh, I did have other employment. All my past employers I could certainly go back to. Um, but I was into municipal government at this point. And uh, I feel that we all should give a little something back, whether it's to go down to the senior center and volunteer once in a while or, you know, uh, get on a board in the local office. You know, we should give something back, and I, I wanted to do that, and that's what I uh, chose was conservation. It allowed me to still be, you know, outdoors and doing the thing that I, I liked and that I uh, was knowledgeable in and, uh, you know, provide a service to my town. And clearly, when I got into it, I, I found that I viewed it as public service and others elected officials. I felt that I was there to provide a service, not to take everything that was spoon-fed to me from uh, a special interest group or from anywhere, even from the state uh, uh, legislature, the general court. You get people in, in the Senate and the state reps, they get, get on board with these things without review, and off they go, off to the races, and they start expecting that we're going to just incorporate these things at the local level. So I never really viewed public service as just taking everything that came down the pike. Um, and that set me apart with some of my colleagues, but that's okay. I've earned their respect in, in, other, uh, in other ways. Um, and if kind of flash forward, and I want to focus a little bit on uh, my time in conservation, because it was by pure luck that I was able to put together and be exposed to enough pieces of information. Things that I learned in uh, the university are coming back and I'm seeing them in public documents and I get to interact with real live, warm-blooded people out in the field who are feeling the impacts of all of the above. And it really was disturbing as I saw control leave the local municipalities and start moving outwards, not just to the states and not just to the federal government, but now we're in a world of public-private partnerships and globalization. We're, I'm, I've started to recognize what that means and what that looks like at the local level. 